In this solve along video, we'll explore how, how to, to factor, factor quadratic trinomials with leading coefficient 1. And we'll do this extensively so that you can dominate your exams. There are plenty of scenarios for factoring general quadratic trinomials, which is why we split it up in bite sizes so that it is much, much easier, easier to, understand. to understand. This is the first part and we'll focus on factoring quadratic trinomials with leading coefficient 1. At this point, you should already be comfortable with factoring polynomials using the GCF method and by grouping. So, if you have no clue what they are or if you haven't seen our videos for it yet, then be sure to, to click, click the, the I, I button. button. Because if you don't have that knowledge, I can guarantee that you'll be making these facial expressions watching any video about factoring quadratic trinomials with leading coefficient 1. Quadratic trinomials follow the form ax squared plus bx plus c, where the coefficients a, b, and c are integers with the restriction that a cannot be equal to 0. When a trinomial has a leading coefficient 1, it means that a is equal to 1. To understand the basics for factoring quadratic trinomials, first consider this example of multiplying two binomials. Now, to factor a trinomial, you'll have to reverse this process, which is why, if you imagine it already, it can involve a lot of guesswork. And to greatly simplify that process, we will only deal with quadratic trinomials with leading coefficient 1 in this video. And of course, having extensive practice in multiplying polynomials will give you some kind of sixth sense and reduce that guesswork by a huge factor. So, on we go! There will be a 3 second countdown before I start solving each problem. You can pause the video to solve it on your own first and then continue playing the video to see if you're correct. Alright, let's learn how to factor quadratic trinomials with leading coefficient 1. Write the trinomial in factored form and include the blanks that we'll fill out later on. There are two cyan blanks for the coefficients and two yellow blanks for the constants. The product of the first terms in the binomials should be equal to w squared, which means that its coefficient is just the integer 1, and the only factors in this case is 1 and 1. As mentioned earlier, we will only be factoring quadratic trinomials with leading coefficient 1. This means that the coefficient of the first terms in the binomials will always be equal to 1. Moving forward, this will greatly simplify the factoring process since we only have to deal with the yellow blanks. The integers that would fit the yellow blanks should be equal to 12 when multiplied, and equal to the middle term coefficient 8 when added. There will be some trial and error involved in looking for the factors. So, let's start with 4 and 3. 4 times 3 is equal to 12. When you add 4 and 3, it is not equal to 8. So, these aren't the factors we are looking for. How about 6 and 2? 6 times 2 is equal to 12. And when you add 6 and 2, the sum is equal to 8. 6 and 2 are the factors that we are looking for. Now we just fill in 6 and 2. The final, final answer, answer is, is w plus 6 times w plus 2. Don't forget to check your answer by expanding it using polynomial multiplication as shown here. Write the trinomial in factored form, including the blanks. Multiplying the yellow blanks should be equal to 14, and adding them should be equal to the middle term coefficient, negative 9. You can use a technique to reduce the number of trial and errors you have to do. Since the middle term is negative and the last term is positive, it means that both factors are negative. Why? Because if you multiply two negative numbers, the product will be positive, and if you add two negative numbers, the sum is negative. But for the sake of demonstration, 
I'll show you what happens when you test two positive factors like 7 and 2. The product of 7 and 2 is 14 as expected, but when you add them, the sum is 9. This is not the middle term coefficient we are looking for. Now, let's try negative 7 and negative 2. Negative 7 times negative 2 is equal to 14 as expected. And if you add negative 7 and negative 2, the sum is negative 9. The factors we are looking for are negative 7 and negative 2, which are both negative numbers. Now, we just fill in negative 7 and negative 2. The final, final answer, answer is, is y minus 7 times y minus 2. Don't forget to check your answer by expanding it using polynomial multiplication as shown here. By the way, please support Teach Me Animated Math by, by liking, liking this, this video. video. And if you're new to our channel, then click, click the, the subscribe, subscribe button, button and hit, hit that bell icon so you get notified whenever we upload new videos. Okay, let's continue. Write the trinomial in factored form, including the blanks. Multiplying the yellow blanks should be equal to negative 63, and adding them should be equal to the middle term coefficient 2. Since the middle term is positive and the last term is negative, it means that one factor is positive and one factor is negative. Why? Because if you multiply a positive and a negative number, then the product will always be negative. And if you add a positive and a negative number, the sum can either be positive, negative, or even zero. And for problem number three, the sum is positive. Let's list all factors of negative 63 and the possible combinations for the yellow blanks. Actually, we can already start eliminating candidate factors by observing the difference between each pair of factors. Since the coefficient of the middle term is 2, it means that the factors we are looking for should only have a small difference. That leaves us with either negative 9 and 7 or 9 and negative 7. This process of elimination will help save you a lot of time, especially when you are taking an exam. But for the sake of demonstration, let's find the sum of negative 21 and 3 and the sum of 21 and negative 3 as well. And as expected, based on the process of elimination, the factors we are looking for are 9 and negative 7. Now, we just fill in 9 and negative 7. The final, final answer, answer is, is r plus 9 times r minus 7. Don't forget to check your answer by expanding it using polynomial multiplication as shown here. Write the trinomial in factored form, including the blanks. Multiplying the yellow blanks should be equal to negative 66, and adding them should be equal to the middle term coefficient 5. Since the middle term is positive and the last term is negative, it means that one factor is positive and one factor is negative. This is actually similar to problem number 3. Let's list all factors of negative 66 along with the possible combinations for the yellow blanks. Because we are looking for factors that have a sum of 5, we can now eliminate candidate factor pairs with huge differences from each other. Let's find the sum of the remaining candidate factors. The sum of 6 and negative 11 is negative 5, which means that they are incorrect factors. The sum of negative 6 and 11 is equal to 5. These are the factors we are looking for. Now, we just fill in negative 6 and 11. The final, final answer, answer is, is x minus 6 times x plus 11. Don't forget to check your answer by expanding it using polynomial multiplication as shown here. Write the trinomial in factored form, including the blanks. Multiplying the yellow blanks should be equal to negative 110, and adding them should be equal to the middle term coefficient 1. Since the middle term is positive and the last term is negative, it means that one factor is positive and one factor 
is negative. This is very similar to problems number 3 and number 4. Let's list all factors of negative 110, along with the possible combinations for the yellow blanks. Because we are looking for factors that have a sum of 1, we can now eliminate, eliminate. candidate factor pairs with huge differences from each other. Because of this elimination technique, we are left with testing only two possible candidates. So, let's start with negative 11 and 10. Their sum is negative 1, so these are incorrect. And the sum of 11 and negative 10 is equal to 1. These are the factors we are looking for. Now, we just fill in 11 and negative 10. The final, final answer, answer is, is x plus 11 times x minus 10. Don't forget to check your answer by expanding it using polynomial multiplication as shown here. And here is the answer key for this worksheet. I hope you learned how, how to, to factor, factor quadratic, quadratic trinomials, trinomials with leading coefficient 1 in this solve along video. Just practice, practice, practice! practice. Factoring quadratic trinomials with leading coefficient 1 until it becomes second nature to you. And don't be afraid to make mistakes since correcting them is part of your learning process. Our next Solve Along worksheet video is about factoring, factoring quadratic, quadratic trinomials, trinomials with, with none 1, one leading, leading coefficient. coefficient. <laughs> this factoring technique involves more trial and error. But don't worry because our video will have step-by-step -step solutions that are very easy to follow. So be, be sure, sure to subscribe, subscribe to Teach Me Animated Math. And don't miss out. See you next time.